Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Christian here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use optical flares and create dynamic lens flares on your footage. So this can be applied to motion graphics or live action, and uh, I'm working with live action right now, so that's probably what most people would use it for, but I've seen a lot of people use it in motion graphics. Um, Michael Bay uses it, like, like probably overuses it. That, that's the word, he uses, overuses these uh, lens flares. And, um, I think his are anamorphic and are actually real lens flares, but Star Trek used uh, the heck out of these uh, optical flares and basically they really enhance your footage and make them very uh, very interesting to watch and they kind of add a depth, a certain depth to the scene and they make it really pop and it'll add that last sort of pizzazz to your project. So um, I'm just going to show you a little bit of an example of what I've done here with optical flares before. and. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a simple test that I did, and as you can see, it's this light, and it's really bright, and um, you can see it's like a very, it's a very uh, dusty lens flare, and it's, it's really revealing a lot of the um, cracks and glass in the lens. So, um, let's get started. So, I have my source layer here, and this is just some basic footage of the lamp, and when you're shooting this, you want to have in mind exactly what you're going to use as a light source or what you want to apply the flares to because that'll help you out later and you want to record what you're going to be using. So in, in this case, it's going to be this lamp because it's a, it's a really bright white spot here. So uh, let's take that layer now and let's duplicate it by hitting uh, Command D on your keyboard and that will uh, make a second copy of the layer that's exactly like the other one. Now let's take that layer and let's take go up here to our ellipse tool and basically we're going to draw a circular shape uh, oh, that's too small we're going to draw a circular shape around our bright spot of where we want the lens flare to kind of happen so yeah that looks about right okay so now we have that and now here comes the uh, tricky part um, we can uh, now just take this uh, mask path and we're going to keyframe it along so that way it follows our uh, luminosity point and our luminance channel. So take that and just drag it over there and you do this for a while. It's basically manual motion tracking and just keep going until you are at the end of your footage and your circle sticks there. So that's uh, might take a while depending on how long your footage is and uh, how complicated your camera moves are. And in that case, I would probably recommend that you go ahead and motion track your footage, or um, in some cases, uh, you might also want to use a track mat, but this is the easiest way, especially if you have a shorter clip, uh, because all you have to do is just keep dragging this over. And it's really accurate, it actually works pretty well, because it's just, you're using one spot, but um, the mask you're drawing doesn't have to be too accurate because uh, it's just one really white spot and everything's pretty washed out anyway so it doesn't really matter but the one thing is that if you have a scene and your lights are there's a lot of light but you're only trying to get a lens for in one that's going to be pretty complicated and you might have to end up drawing a pretty precise mat because you don't want uh, the optical flares to pick up any other sources of light so now that that's fully um, tracked to this light point, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to desaturate it so we get uh, whites and blacks here. So um, let's go over here to our human saturation and let's turn that all the way down to negative 100. And so as you can see, it's a black and white image. So let's select that again. And we're going to basically take this and completely single out the um, brightness and luminance. So we're going to go and we can either use levels or colorama and the process is basically the same but I'm going to use colorama and instead of using this uh, instead of using uh, the uh, motor we're using now we're going to use the uh, ramp gray output mode and then we're going to make one color picker and we're going to make that completely black and we're just going to keep dragging that all the way over until we get that but I really don't want to use this one. Uh, Colorama is not as good as using levels, but you can um, uh, mess around, see which one works best for you. But I'm going to show you in levels. So we're going to just basically, we're going to try making all of the um, the the whites of this uh, 
the white of the light. We want to make that completely solid. Basically, you want to make it so that way you're only seeing what's what's extremely bright, and that's that white spot right there. And everything else inside your uh, area should be black. So this looks pretty good so far. And mm, okay, that looks good. Okay, so now it's almost completely white, and that looks uh, good, like I said. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this layer and we're gonna make a new solid. It has to be black, and then we're gonna drag that under that. So now we have this. And then uh, if we play it, it's just a light, and it looks pretty much like our footage. So um, there's that. And I'm just gonna take these two and pre-compose them together, so that way it's one layer. We can work with just one layer, and so we're gonna go to layer precompose or shift command C, and there we go. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off for a minute, and I'm gonna make a new solid, and this is gonna be black too. And um, I'm gonna go to optical flares now, and this is where the magic happens. We're gonna take optical flares, and we're just gonna drag it onto our solid. And now, if you go into options, you have all the beautiful presets of optical flares. Uh, so. Yeah, it, there's just so much, it's ridiculous, and it's awesome, and I, for $130, you get a ton of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so, some of my, basically, rule of thumb for using flares, basically, you want it to match your light source, because if you're using, like, a ridiculous green lens flare that's, like, that looks like you're, you know, that's all wacky, but you're just filming like a desk lamp. It's not going to look cool. And even though you can change the colors, I recommend just sticking with the original color pretty much, but you can change it a little bit. So yeah, we have custom objects here, which is basically you can add like different types of, um, you can add parts to the lens flares that are already there, or you can make some of your own. And, uh, yeah, there's these lights and, uh, you know, they all look pretty good. Um, I would say that you just use as many as you can so that way you know what you're looking for. But one of my favorite ones to use is, uh, where is it? Is this, uh, where is it? I'm trying to find it, it's in here. Um, well, okay, what it's called is it's, it's, a, it's a cracked lens and basically the cracked lens, it, it simulates, um, it simulates what basically, a very broken camera looks like. Oh, here it is. Scratch glass. And that looks really cool. And it, it's very natural looking. So if you're looking for that look, that's one I helped you out with. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go to Pro Presets 2. And this blindness is obviously really bright. So the names pretty much give away what they are. And Glamour, this would be like if you're at a Hollywood fashion montage. But these can be really versatile. And up here, Global Parameters change it completely. And you can change everything about it, but I'm not going to because uh, that would take a long time to get everything I like, and I really can spend a lot of time in this. But yeah, uh, there's a flashlight one because uh, if you want to track a flashlight, there's um, one. This is like sort of for cameras, but uh, yeah, these are all pretty cool. I'm gonna end up using this red spot one and just tinting it just just had. So when we're done with selecting our lens wire, just select OK. And now we have that. And uh, what I'm going to do is change the source type to luminance. And now uh, as the source, um, we want the source layer to be our pre-composed layer. And that's going to be the one that we, uh, that we did. So now we want to change the render mode to on transparent. And we're going to change the bright, we're taking the brightness down a lot. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to change the scale down just a tad, and... Okay, so that looks pretty good, and, um, yeah, I don't really like how this one turned out, but, you know, you can always change it, and you can see the light tracks there. Make the brightness a little bit, just a little bit more, not, oh, wow, that, like, blew it out. Okay, that looks good. Change it to maybe 15. Basically, just play around with it, see what you get. 70. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now we're going to change the color a little bit. Um, because the light source is actually more of a tan color, and that looks good. Alright, so now you can see uh, the light looks really realistic, and the lens flares are it's moving along with what your luminance mat was. 
And um, yeah, one thing I do recommend you do is actually, um, if you have the plugin, I would use Real Smart Motion Blur uh, on your final render because that'll kind of get the lens flares a little bit better. I don't, the motion blur that comes with um, uh, these uh, with optical flares is pretty good, but sometimes it's not as good as it sh could be. So you know, just uh, keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, so I would turn on motion blur for all of these, and then um, yeah, let's turn on motion blur for this. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you just want to keep everything. In uh, keep everything looking decent, realistic, and um, just as a little bonus uh, surprise here, I'm actually going to add, I'll show you how to add custom objects. So one thing that looks really cool is to add lens orbs because that'll make your lens look a little bit like there's, uh, there's a little bit of dirt on it sometimes. Uh, so yeah, some bokeh, you can add some bokeh in the back. Mm, let's go back. Custom objects, and yeah, so just play around with this. Feel free to uh, give me your suggestions for next tutorials.